me. Shut the fuck up. This guy walks up to Cage, he's going like that to Brainy, that going, yeah, fucking come on, come on, Brainy just goes, spits in this kid's face, mate. <laughs> to drop a jacket off for one of the lads who had left it mine. A jacket. That's to make a statement. He gonna need a body bag or a nice sack. He a bitch, he a fold on the pressure. I can tell from his posh man, he ain't really like that. Mama told me I don't care if you scared. Go man for the kill. If they try, you better fight back. I know you've been. I know you've been. Got my professional now. <laughs> And action. We've <laughs> <laughs> uh, got the Warwick Warrior on today. Mr. Go on, Mark Warwick Tiffin. Warrior. How you doing, pal? Yeah, I'm good, mate. Good, mate. Looking forward to Dubai. Yeah, I can't wait, mate, to be honest. It's a bit of a shame you're not just going on a party holiday. You're actually going to knock someone's head off. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Might be a bit party. Keep this baby a bit close <laughs> to the mouth. There we go. So, how, how was it? Get, it? get into how that one matched up. So, obviously, I followed a little bit of your BKB career. You've... You've been doing good in the BKB organisation. How's this Dubai thing come about? Uh, to be honest, um, I messaged Jim and Joe, um, wanting something decent um, for my next fight. And then they said, leave it with us. I was expecting something like a title shot or something like that. And then um, they came back with, uh, what about Dubai? And then I thought, yeah, that'll do. It's a fucking result, huh? <laughs> yeah, definitely. Enjoyed it. Well, I enjoyed my training as well. Can't wait for this. Bring us, bring us full circle. I've had, I've managed to, I've made a couple of videos for you, so I've obviously got to see a little bit of you from the hay bales to BKB. There's probably been plenty of street fights in between. Talk <laughs> us through, talk <laughs> us through when you first realised I like a bit of a fight. I'm good at this. I'm gonna fucking go do it in a bit more of a professional environment. When did that come to be? Um, what it was, uh, to be honest, I used to go out all the time, um, drinking and having parties and. Fighting all the time, every weekend. Well, I used to... Would you go out and find it, or would it find in you? Yeah, a bit both, to bit be honest. Both. Yeah, I would be devastated if I didn't have a fight. <laughs> yeah, I was a bit good. And then I had kids, and I thought, I'm going to end up getting jail here, and these kids need to be, like, need a dad. So I chilled out a bit, um, and then I started playing rugby, trying to lose a bit of aggression on there, and then... Would it boil over at rugby field a fair bit as well? For yeah, you? every time. Red cards virtually every week. <laughs> every time I played, I thought, yeah. Who did you play for, not only? He played yeah, rugby no. union, which I'd like. What, Foot Worms, was it? Yeah, Foot Worms. I had yeah. a game Foot Worms. Yeah. yeah I had one yeah, game no, Foot Worms. Good. 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 Crack remember out. that? Remember that? Uh, Stanley, Stanley Lock Lane game. So the first time I ever met Ellis, I'd come back from university and I was doing a bit of like strength and conditioning for Lock Lane. For 18s, my friend Richard Humphreys, what coach? Yeah. And everyone were talking about this kid elbow and this lace it like who the fucking and at training it's like at time he probably as tall as now but you had no on you really did you I'm no. like I just don't see how this kid's knocking all these people out and I'm like but well, we're gonna probably see you a weekend because there's a game and they were playing standingly away mate and he must have ended about five or six lads yeah, just it like kicked off and that what for us first sort of time I'd I'd been around that do you know what well, like, yeah. He, it was way worse than what it looked on the video as well. Yeah. So it's because there's a video of it. I'll show you it after. Fuck me, I fucked my finger up actually. I've got like a Harry Potter scarf full length of my finger. And they'd kicked it over at top. I think Lou Cobson had caught it, hadn't he? Yeah, and they gave him a bit of a stick uh, up. Yeah, ball. and like three of their lads all like jumped on him and like pushed him about, kicked him off ball and all that. And then um, they started fighting. I were at full back and I just seen three <laughs> of them. One of them had his back to me. So I was I'm running over like, I, he's got his hand cocked and I just fucking front side as well. I went bang, banged in one. I think I looked down, it looks like I got to kick him on um I think on you were video. a few kicks, so I think there yeah. were a few nah, kicks in Yeah, but I think later on, I think yeah, yeah. that bit. So, and I'm like stood over, looked like I'm going to kick him. Then someone runs from there and then I hit him as well. And then I just start on the video, I start fighting with another couple of lads. But then off camera, it like pushed out into crowd and we're fucking off we're throwing each other about there as well. <laughs> then I got <laughs> sent <laughs> off and for some reason, and then I got sent off and then, oh no, I, I didn't even get sent off. I no, came game, off because of my hand. game got abandoned. No, no, I think it carried on. Did it? But I think they brought me off and I was just there, like, all their crowd were giving me loads of you shit. You doing push-ups on side? Like, I was fucking doing, I was doing push-ups, mate. I saw a video on <laughs> yeah. Facebook. I'm like, oh, for <laughs> fuck's sake. <laughs> Bad do. So, bit of scrapping as, we, as we're getting all the, what? Yeah. Uh, I, I know the story a little bit, but tell for people who are watching. I know you'd had a, you'd gone out on a night out and just oh, said, yeah. said, yes, I'm going to do this. <laughs> yeah, what had happened, uh, I was in railway um, with a few lads. And they got on about this say bell fighting and all this carry on. And um, I didn't even had no beard up to this point. I'd just, just got in. They were already pissed up. 
And I started having a few beers and they said, they want a 13 stone fire, go on, Mark, have a go. I said, no chance of doing that. Later on at night, they kept on pecking at me and I started getting more ale in me. I said, put my name down and I'll fight. I said, not a problem. Pissed had, you, had you been to watch this before? I've no, seen... I'd never been to watch, never knew who we were fighting for, didn't know oh at all. I just thought it's just a fight. I know, I know the feeling of that, taking fights when you're like pissed up or like at a party or something like that oh. and you get a text, one of, one, of, one of the fights I got, I were, it were a Sunday morning at like seven in the morning and I were over in Ireland and I got a text off a promoter saying, I've got you a, a, a title fight on Saturday. Bear in mind, it's Sunday morning on Saturday. If you can do it, it's a last minute thing, 84 kilos. And I'm just like, yeah, fuck it, yeah, fuck it, whatever, I'll do it. <laughs> then you wake up next day and you're like, for fuck's sake, rough as fuck. How did, how did you feel <laughs> next day when you when you woke up, you realised, right, I've, I've well, agreed to, to do honest, this A-Bell fight? Yeah, um, I totally forgot that I signed up for this fight, to be honest, uh, but it had been put all over social media. All the lads sharing it that I'm fighting. I thought, oh, I'm almost got to do well, that. I didn't Well, I didn't even I didn't even know it at this at this point. Um, I'd walk up to go to the toilet about four o'clock in the morning. Looked at my phone. Send me a picture over, mate. You're matched. And I thought, matched. <laughs> Tipping match, like that for it, mate. Yeah. <laughs> thought matched for what? <coughs> and I've looked through messages before what I've been sending the night before. I didn't have a clue what I'd been sending him. But I read I'll fuck it. them all. Up. Yeah, saying, I'll fight any man and all yeah. this. <laughs> Yeah, How did that fight go then? Yeah, it was good to be honest. It was a bit, bit scrappy, like, but it? yeah, but how intense is it? With uh, how close quarters are you? It's virtually it's like size of this room, but sm yeah, probably sm smaller than this room to be honest. Yeah, good. So we did that for a couple of fights, I believe. Right, I did did one there. Um, um, yeah, it was scared. I got out of car to be honest that day. I got out of car, just full field, just transit vans, pickups, <laughs> all sorts. For Jesus Christ, what's going on here? So what have I put my 10 into? Who did you go with? Just my missus. I turned up. <laughs> <laughs> Just turned up. Turned up. I thought, oh, God, she went, Mark, what you done here? I said, I don't know. I said, I can't pull it out. No you chance. I said, I put my name there. I've got to fight. I said, I ain't bothered about outcome. But then um, I'd sold a lot of tickets, like, but I, we had to be there early. So there were just me and my missus, loads of people there. But then I sold about 80 tickets. So all lads come then. I thought, that, I feel all Probably right now. Then, yeah. yeah. And it says, we're at scales here, so we get weighed in. It says, no scales, mate, you just got to look similar size. Foot <laughs> hard sound. <laughs> this lad I'm fighting six foot hard, tall as all. He was like a lat, like, but yeah, I trained hard as hope for that fight because I, I was scared, to be honest. I thought I didn't know what I was going into. And how were the training looking then? So it, were it boxing specific or just. No, just, just cardio, just, just, getting yeah, fit. just getting fit, mate. Yeah, just running and just circuits and. There were no, it, I didn't even spar up to like my last camp. Was it a bit me. more like a street fight then? Yeah, it was. Yeah, was it? yeah it felt like it was. How does, how does <laughs> the feeling walking into an A-bale with surrounded by pikeys compared to like walking out in uh, O2 Indigo for BKB? Well, it felt a bit, I felt a bit scared to be honest when I got in because I thought, I didn't know this kid. I didn't know who got there. Um, there's no Shakiri. There's no nothing. And I thought, if I beat this kid up here, what's, what's outcome after? Mm. So my, 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 like my head mind was, starts playing yeah. a few tricks. Mate, yeah, we'll my, did you come to my first to ever fight? Uh, first, Le fight I, no, first, first fight I came to watch you was, I, I know I was saying Manchester or Liverpool when you fought ah, that uh, right. in Whitby Ash, right hand. Ash Gibson. Yeah. My first ever fight, I got matched, I was 17. Uh, I'd been doing a bit of jujitsu and MMA for about a year or so. And I just wanted to fight, like nobody from my gym fought, they all just trained. So like independent fighter trying to find my own, like trying to find people on Facebook who match fights. And I found a guy who owned a gym called Leeds Cage, rough as fuck. I had all brain in, all them lot come down, all Jacob and all that. And I got matched up against this guy called John Bruff. I was 17, I turned up, he was like 35, Jippo, oh. looked rough as fuck. And I was there like, oh, fucking nice one. There for me, warm up, mate, I'm learning how to sprawl. <laughs> I didn't know how to sprawl and I'm learning all that shit. Walk out, I was taller than the cage and then the roof would just a bit, the ceiling would just a bit taller than me. So I was like fucking cramped Crouched up. <laughs> anyway, I ended up getting stopped in first round because Brain is there being a gobshite. This kid beats me, ref stops it and this guy walks up to cage, he's going like that to Brain and that going, yeah, fucking come on, come on, Brain. He just goes, spits in this kid's face, mate, straight through cage. It all starts booting off. They're all there with fucking bulldogs and lot inside. Yeah. Thingy. All, all of his supporters, mate, are like, get me the fuck out of here. Yeah. Man, rough. Not about that. That. Proper fucking rough. So to Dubai then, what's, uh, I know we were talking about the game plan yesterday. By the way, what, what day What day is the Dubai fight? 18th of March. Sound well, we're going to put this out on 22nd of March. So right. if you want to talk about your game plan, let's talk about it. Uh, to be fair, I don't know much about my opponent, to be honest. So, um, it's just how he comes out. 
how we adapt to him. I went on his Instagram the other day and I seen, like like I said, there's, there's just a lot of pictures and not really any videos. You couldn't find any of him fighting really. Yeah, I've, I've not. I've been sent a video uh, of his stoppages and that's about it. Um, and what's he stopping him with hands in MMA? No, uh, leg kicks. Uh, leg kicks in a submission. submission. So. No, yeah, the, so the video, no that, you, the me, video yeah. that you sent me yesterday of him wide open and oh, throwing loose shots. If he fires like them on them videos, if he hadn't changed, he's, he's in for the long I think night. the opponent you beat, is it Binden? Toby yeah, Binden. Binden yeah. He went over there in that triangular ring. Yeah, it really suit his style because he likes to get clean work. Yeah, I think this triangular ring could be... You know. I think it'll suit me, that, because you've got to fight. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you, it doesn't matter if you're a good boxer or not. It's just the toughest, really, I yeah. think, in that. You can you clinch in that, in that. Yeah, so you can get your hand and just throw shots. I think it'll... I think it'll suit you yeah, massively. I think that'll then. suit me, to be honest. Is that you still connected to Bluetooth? Maybe I'll turn it off. Get some mind. sound bars. <laughs> I don't mind that, mate. Or you? Yeah. Um, yeah, the Toby Binden fight. That were that were. Um, I think you what first fight I've seen you do in person. I was very impressed by it. Yeah. Obviously, you're a bit of an underdog there because yeah, well, he, he'd been at BKB for a while. He's obviously got a good style. He's quite tight with his mm. boxing and that. Well, and, uh, obviously, he told me it's uh, because I had a bit of an inkling that I was going to be fighting him. Because I'd seen him back in training, and we're saying we're waiting for an opponent, and, wait, and I kept on seeing him training all the time after he came back, and he was saying I want, I need a win, I need a win, and then I thought he's gonna try and put me with him, and um, I won't wait to Barnsley to go and pick a uh, radiator up for a car, and I went on about on the way there as well, and then Jim messaged me saying what about Toby Binden, uh, let me know it's seventy five, kg, and I, I thought that's a good fight for me that. He's got a good name. I thought that'd be good for me. Mm. And uh, I said, let me speak to my coach. So I spoke to Onzi about it. And he said, I think he's a bit too much for you, Mark. Uh, I'm not being audible. I just think he's a bit too much at this point. Quite I've, experienced, a bit more skill set maybe. Yeah, I think he, he said, I'd, I, I think like, you could beat him. I'm not saying that. I just think he's like, you he should be getting warm-up fights. And what's your reaction there? Is it just like, actually, you know what? Let's see then. Let's yeah, find out. I just thought, well, I want, I want to try and prove a point. If he beats me, he beats me. But he's, he's got something to lose, I am. Mm -hmm. I thought, I'll, I want to fight him. Makes sense. Uh, so Holmes, he messaged uh, Jim. And Jim said, um, you can't pick fighters, you fight who you are. And he got Holmes a bit pissed off. Uh, so Holmes, he just messaged me saying, to take that fight, mate, fuck it, we'll beat him. I said, I already have. <laughs> and he said, oh, sounds like if you're confident, I'm confident. So we work together and then, Obviously, we got the win. It came off nice that way. Yeah, yeah, we, 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 we all were there that day, weren't we? All filmed yeah. it. Yeah, yeah, good that. Big crowd. Yeah, on the pod, like, we spoke about this, what I'm going to say now um, on the pod that we just filmed about Dubai. Obviously, me and, me and Josh were under the impression that Dubai is this nice place. It's like there's no crime whatsoever because of how strict they are. And my mates just landed in there and he was telling me he was getting into fights on the street with American dudes and yeah, Saudis and cool. that filming. So I'm just yeah. going to say now I know like I know you like a scrap, so be careful. <laughs> yeah, Dubai, yeah. Mate. Locked up your fight fight. <laughs> yeah, do I reckon bit. it, I don't know, I, I was searching that last night. Can it be that bad? They can't just, security can't just let them be no, fighting hotels. You know, do you know what it is? Uh, that what we talked about with the rappers and all that shit, having beef in hotel lobbies and that, I think that were a, I think it was like a phase after lockdown where all rappers went there at the same time. So obviously all, East, East versus West London I don't know what gangs they've got but they all see each other there and then they have them fight I don't know if it's like that now I think it was a little phase meant to be really strict as well you're not like if you're drunk on streets you get locked up and stuff like that don't you apparently I don't know if that's I've never been say. like so I don't know well, they've only just started allowing you to drink over there mm. fully like there were a complete alcohol ban over there mm. well like, I've got, um, I've had a, I'm not allowed no banners um, in fight um, in the, on my t uh, sponsored t-shirts if it's all to do with CBD oil, um, porn or alcohol, you're not allowed to wear it. He said that yesterday, didn't he? He, 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 well, he, he got busted going over there with THC pens oh, and, they, no. and they pulled him up it in his bag. And he was like saying, oh, it's CBD. And they're like, yeah, that's also still, illegal. Still illegal. But then he ended up not getting done because they said, oh, we're going to go and check it. They didn't check if it was THC. They checked how much it weighed and it weighed three grams. They're like, no, it's fine. <laughs> just sign a piece of paper and you can go. Oh, look at him. He'd have been shitting yeah. it on you. Yeah. I said this to him last, last night. I'd have just been thinking, fucking hell. Yeah. I think you can get. I think you can get jail for it. Be, for drugs being in your system, I think. <sighs> if, if like if you took some over here, and like it's in your system for, I don't know a lot. So if you got tested over there, you can get you can get jail for it's it. It's not surprising. So where we filming this podcast? We're in not only Warwick Boy. How's that? Growing up on that estate, when I was younger, it had like a massive when, That's reputation. what I was going to say. Because when I was younger, they used to be, I used to go up with Nathan Owens. There were um, a skate park there. 
Yeah. And I remember like sort of getting dropped off. It got chopped street. up and waving that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I did. remember sort of just that was my first sort of Warwick experience going into that skate park. To be honest, shit, as a kid, if you like grew up and lived on there, <clears> it was good when I was a kid. Because we all stuck together. Like if other people came on, there were no blacks allowed. It was like proper, no blacks, no Polish, no nothing. It was just like all lads. Um, anyone coming coming on the state for trouble, a lot of us would get together. Fair enough, we used to fight each other as well. If no one like came on, we'd fight each other. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, it was mad. It, but we'd all stick up for each other and it was good. Um, and like now, it's just too many crackheads and smackheads. Has this got out of control? Yeah, it's just, well, all good lads have ended up getting jailed through fighting. Um, and then all the smackheads have obviously just done a lot of crimes and robbing people and getting out after a couple of months. So it's just full of them now. Yeah. That's how I'm off there. That yeah. one place that... Castleford's not too bad, is it, as an area? Um, when I was younger, it were like, I'm trying to think at spaces that were... Airdale, really Airdale were quite a yeah, well-taught, like, nobody wanted to go up to Airdale, especially for, like, for an organised fight, if you're school fighting someone from, like, if someone from Cassio fighting someone from Airdale, and you're like, oh, I'm up to Airdale, like, I'm, I'm staying at home, me. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then if anyone ever mentioned Warwick Estate, we're like, yep, seen a bit. Yeah, we're rough, <laughs> very rough. <clears throat> it was just like new people, like, if, if you moved on to Estate, you'd have to have a fight, see how good you are. Bit like a it's like marrying like into letting gypsy them in, family, like, yeah. letting them type in, yeah, and yeah like, like initiation, was, yeah, it was unreal, it was fucking mad to be honest. So I'm guessing it was like the hay bale fight that kind of put you on the path to wanting to actually do fighting professionally and make something with it. And where, where do you actually want to be with it? Like, what's the goal? Yeah, well, the hay bales did start to be quite honest, um, and I thought they I just stuck to the hay bales with me not being really, really good at boxing, um, but then I've just I took uh, what happened there. Oh yeah, I got offered to fight on Bad to the Bone, um, and I thought, well, I'm going to have to try and learn a bit of boxing here because I'm in a ring. Mm. But now I've, I feel like I could I could box a bit um, and move about a bit. Uh, so now I want to be I want to go higher, To be honest, how much focus are you putting on on boxing training? Are you treating it very professional? Yeah, I've, yeah. I'm um, well. I mean, virtually every single day. If it's not just going in, just doing like shadow boxing and just things what people have taught me on my PTs. Just are you, are you still doing stuff at Shred? Yeah, still doing that. Yeah, I'm going with Dave Noyce there. Oh, uh, yeah, doing SNC as well. I do odd bit with Ryan J. Um, You've been working box. with Wayne a little bit? Yeah, I've been working with Wayne. How's yeah. that been? Yeah, it's been good. He's, oh, he knows everything. He's old school, yeah, it yeah, don't yeah. matter <laughs> what you ask him, he knows it straight away. Yeah, yeah he's good. I'm yeah. sure he was the bouncer at Kiko's <clears> when he went 18. I think you were like you were massive main man at eight, like eighteen. You were like still. Well, when I first started boxing, I think I was like nineteen. <clears throat> I fought on a couple of his undercards, and every single time he'd get obviously he's a little stocky guy, he'd be fighting big, tall gearheads, mate, and or you'd obviously be like, oh, he's, he's you're backing the big guy every time, and Wayne he just used to knock him flat. He fought Shane Cowan at UFC. Off. Yeah, I know. Good show in that. Some good credentials. Um, so obviously your son's fighting, and yeah, I, I saw that. April 14th. Is that what it is? Is yeah, that Scott, Scott McHugh's show? Yeah. Scott McHugh's show, I think yeah. I'll, Should we go to that? Well, we're going to go because Johnny Graham we're going to fight, but I don't know if he's I think Bol is Bolton still fighting on yeah, it Bolton's as well? on the card. Yeah, Bolton, yeah. yeah. I think we should we should definitely go and watch that. Well, if I'm all right, if after this fight in Dubai, I'll be fighting on there like, if my hands are all right. It's not a bad show. It's actually all right. Um, but it's on moved. fight TV Just, this time. He's got straight Yeah, he's yeah, moved yeah, yeah. it to light waves, hasn't he, this time? Mm. Yeah, so... and. Your kid's fighting, um, it's a lad from... Golden Team. Golden Team, yeah, isn't it? Yeah. Do you know much about him, have you? Uh, no, he really just, like, just a, novice, just, just a novice like mine. Uh, how's, you, how's he feeling? He's confident as all. Is he it? just said, why do he's I have to wear gloves? good, mate. Is that what he said? <laughs> why do I have to wear gloves, Dad? It's shit with gloves. I said, what do you mean it's shit with gloves? He said, well, it, it can't really hurt him, can you, with gloves on? No, it's not still hurt him, man. That's... sound. <laughs> yeah. That should be good, mate. Yeah. You, is he getting behind sort of like picking his walkout music and all yeah, that? Yeah, he, he, oh, he, he wants to come out to, I think it's warm mode, I think. Warm I want to go to what? <laughs> I, I'm like, oh, man, I'm not kidding. He listens to it all the time. Shadow box in his bedroom. That's I've, good. I've, that got, he's got, so a, I've got a quick question for you. So, you know, if you probably wouldn't have found the hay bales and the, the outlet for boxing that it's given you, could you could you have seen yourself going down a, a different path? Yeah, it does help with my mental health, to be quite honest, mate. Um with my life, what I've had as a kid. Uh, my dad would have fucking drug in and fucking used to beat me. My mum used to beat me. I've had a bad upbringing, to be honest. 
not through my mum's side, through like from when I was like seven year old, my dad, my real dad, I don't know what to do with him now, like, but he had a bad upbringing and had a bad car accident, so um, one of my best mates died. Yeah, I read something about that. Um, so it just fucked me, I don't for years to be honest. Um, and I've out through the aggression now, it sorts me head out for like six, a couple of months. But did like, some of that trauma where you just start learning it in just violence? Yeah, like I used to, like that's why I was fighting all the time and stuff like that out of town because that's what cured it. A bit of a buzz. Yeah, and then I'd be right. After I had a few cuts and bruises, I f felt like all right. Um, but boxing uh, and this is just sort of, sort of every problem, to be honest. If it weren't for this, um, it'd have been definitely something different. Why do you think it's just give you that discipline, that focus? Yeah, it has. That boxing and my kids, to be quite honest. If it weren't for them, I'd have been left off or, or dead, 100%. Does your partner keep you in order? She yeah, she does you? good to be Massive, honest. that, and yeah. having a good yeah, partner. Yeah, he's my, Yeah, I'd have been definitely dead or left off, 100%, if it weren't for them kids. Do you still, obviously now you're training a lot and you're getting fights booked in and stuff, do you think that's... Um, I don't know if you're partying much now or... if you No, uh, when, once I've been training, I'm rather flat out or not at all. Uh, as soon as I get matched, stop drinking, um, don't go out at all. Just train, like, um, eat properly. Yeah, as soon as my fight's finished, I'm back to <laughs> just flat out, well, good drinking, eating, just enjoying myself. Not like being an idiot, but I just enjoy myself. In terms of those BKB ranks, when you get through this fight here in, in Dubai, BYB, and come back to BKB, who's on the horizon there? Who's the title holder at the minute with that weight? It, my weight, it's uh, Tony Laffey. Tony Laffey? Mm-hmm. It my weight, yeah. I don't rate him too much, me. He can, he, he can, he can box and he's in and out, but can he take a shot? I don't know. Who, who did he just fight beat? last? He fought Reese last, didn't he? Reece. Reece. Well, yeah, and he didn't fare that well against him, I don't think. No, he had a, he had a bit of time away, hadn't he? So that's the weight category. So what's that, 70? That's 70, 70, 70, 70, yeah, 74 to 76. Kelly's yeah. in that category, isn't it? As well, Kelly, he's going to come back, yeah. Right. But he can fight at 72, 74, but it's, it's Well, just, I'm fine at 72 for this next one. He's just had to pull out of this with shoulder. Yeah, he, he, gonna, he was going to match up against... That um, Raphael. Yeah. It'd have been a good fight, that. Would have been a good fight. I've see, I seen that coming, to be quite honest. I thought it, that Raphael were going to rather fight Reese, And I thought I thought about him. Mm. Kelly. I think he's coming back out. There's a show just after. He's the one in... May, is it? Is it April, May? Yeah, he's looking to get on that. Yeah. Be good that. I think they've got one in June as well, you know. Do you think they'll ever move it round country? I wish they would. They're on about it. I wish they quite, would. They're on about it, to be quite honest. Because I said I was sick of travelling. And this is how we're going to get some shows up north. It makes sense, so, doesn't it? Of course like, it does. If they're, if they're in competition with Soto, they are in competition yeah. with BKFC, let's be honest. Yeah, like, they're, the two, they're the two front runners for promoting yeah. bare knuckle boxing. It makes sense that they're travelling around country. Well, it's a lot better for other fighters as well because, like, us from right down here, it's three and a half hour, four hour to drive. It's an expensive there. trip and all, isn't it? Yeah, and then stay, you've got to stay that night. These lads who are from that area, they just turn up on day, just go, and then they can go back mm, to the hotel. And, chill. and it, it'd be nice for us to do that yeah. at some point. Like BKFC are moving about, aren't they? They're, they're in Leeds, aren't they? Like Leeds, Leeds, Newcastle, Liverpool, they're just, they're just moving about, and it's, they can take different people from different areas. Then, rather you're finding than... different pocket of fans then. Mm. Yeah, you definitely. Do you know what I'm saying? It's mm. like, if you knew we were in an area and you're a fight fan and you haven't been to a bare knuckle event, you ain't going to go to O2 for, unless it's your friend fighting. Yeah, you're definitely. Yeah. Down, but it's, it's yeah. such a good sport to watch. And it's, it, it is hard to get a crowd of people to travel, travel all three way to and a half, four yeah. hours down on a it's fucking a train. Money, cause it, say uh, it's un, under quid for a ticket and like, um, say a coach, if you're booking a coach, mm. definitely under quid for a ticket and, and yeah. to get a coach. Yeah. But then yeah. the, there's these spends down there. And you're not going to just go for day really, are you? Me you want to stop the night. You want to stop the night. It's, it's gonna all in all, it's gonna cost it's gonna cost six hundred quid just to go and watch someone like that, that's from one person. Mm. Six hundred quid. And if, say if you're a couple, that's twelve hundred quid. Mm. You could go on holiday for twelve hundred quid. I think mm. they'll do it. I think I think the, it's gonna they're gonna be they're gonna have to. It's gonna come to a point where they're gonna have to start making changes like that. I think they'll all, they'll probably always say now, listen, we're doing it right, and I think they are doing it right. BKB, they do a lot of good stuff, but I, I think moving around the country and and. Tapping into different fan bases. Yeah, I think that'll work a lot better, to be quite Imagine honest. Imagine you here at Leeds and I people know. you get to come. And That's what I mean. Like, I, I, went, I fought on Scott's show, didn't I? Um, and maximum tickets I could have added, well, it were 160, I think. 
What, you sold 160 tickets? Well, I wanted more. I could have sold like a lot more, but it, it had to, I was getting like tickets off people who couldn't sell them and that because... What do you put the the ability to sell many tickets down I to? I got a clue. Just, just good draw, people like your aunt area. Just like, I think it's just likeability and obviously like you just say yeah. there, you're from, you're from Warwick where everyone sticks together, you've grown up as a crowd. Yeah, I haven't got a clue. No, no offence to people from Warwick, but you don't really see much coming out of Warwick, no, do you? You don't, you don't see no, many no, talents. So when no, someone no. comes out as a pro fighter and they can sell tickets and fucking put a show on and knock people stiff, people want to go see it. To be fair, just on there, there's no one what wants to do out. There's they, they've got no backbone, they just don't want to, because they're all like together, they're the same group of people. Nobody wants to leave it. And they do don't, yeah, they shit. don't want to leave and just like make their own life and do something better for themselves. Do they, what do they, they sometimes put a bit of a negative spin on when you're trying to clean your act up a bit, just sort of try and drag you a bit into it? Um, they have done, to be fair, like last night I went and um, I went to drop a jacket off for one of the lads who had left it mine. A jacket. <laughs> 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 Right, well. there's, your, there's your jacket, pal. <laughs> oh, <laughs> no, the old jacket. We I went and took jacket, <laughs> full took rafters. Just dropping a couple of jackets off, love. <laughs> yeah, anyway, uh, yeah, I went and took it. And he says, uh, what are you doing? Are you staying? I said, no, I'm not staying. I said, I'll have a, I'll have a pop with you. So I had a pop. And he said, oh, I've got you a pint. I said, no, I don't want a pint. I said, fucking I'm fighting in two weeks. So oh, we you went have it. You. One went here, come on, fucking hell, one went here. I went, do you know what? I said, I'm fucking off, can't be asked to be a fucking, I just fucked off. Yeah, it's no good, is it? Shouldn't be doing that. If you want to, like, I wouldn't do that to one of my mates, to be quite honest. No. I'd be telling him not to. It's a serious level of fighting now, mate, it's no, Yeah, of course no it is. It, and I, if I get beat, I get beat. I don't care about that. But if I know that I've cheated in my camp, yeah. I blame it on myself. Yeah. Like, every time I fight, there won't be no, like, regrets. Like he's just better than me. He's better. He's won me unless I got poorly, like type thing or something like that. But mm. other than that, there's no excuses at uh, all. Have you got any any sort of regrets going up? Um, stuff that you've done, stuff that you've not done, decisions you've made or not like. Uh, not really, because I won't be glad I am today if I didn't do it. Yeah. Have you like ever had any opportunities that you've not took? Like you were saying, yeah. He, uh, he, you could have gone to Canada, Canada. travelling, but he stayed here for a missus, and he regrets that. Yeah, um, well, I used to be really good at rugby when I was younger. Um, I got signed uh, to me, Zach, Hardacre, uh, Greg Eden, um, Danny Andy. So you were playing rugby league at the time? Yeah, uh, I used to play for Rockwear, and we got me and them, to, uh, there were me, Dale Martin, Danny Andy, um, Greg DeWant from there, Greg Eden, um, and Zach. We all got picked at the same time. We went to Cass Academy. Um, we started playing there. I got signed. Um, well, all of us got signed apart from one of us. Didn't didn't manage to make it. And then um, we were only young, about 16, 17. And I thought, ah, fucking hell. Uh, women started coming about and stuff like that. And I fucked that off. I just thought, fucking hell, I can't be asked going up there. Just lost love for the sport? Or just no, went? I enjoyed it. But I, for all me, like, when I was younger... Um, I just used to not turn up to train and stuff because I, I, I used to love playing. When I was there playing, I loved it. Um, and my coach, Yankee, he used to come down and uh, knock me out of bed to go and play rugby. On it. And I used to try and make excuse. Ah, my, my, um, I ain't got no boots. I've left my boots, I think. And left got, left oh, my on. jacket at me, mates. Yeah, I left my jacket at me, mates. I can't play again. <laughs> yeah, so then he'd just go out and get, oh, I'll get you a pair of boots. So he'd go out and get me a pair of boots just to play. And it was just an excuse that I didn't want to. And then once I was there, I was sound. We used to play like decent, but I wish I would have just stuck at that. To be honest, have any other boys from Warwick come and played rugby league? We've been a big spot around. Is any names that mm. playing pro? No, D Dale Martin one, and that's it. Because they were up from well, he was just off there, wasn't he? Because where's Zaki from? Where's that? Ferry Bridge. Ferry Bridge. Ferry Bridge. Yeah. Mm. What about? Did you see? Um, what's his name? Fucking. Who? The guy who did all that shit in Ponty, uh, Westerman. Oh, I've seen all that stuff oh, in Western. Oh, mate, yeah, I, I was in the lads group and I seen it. Well, I didn't even know who he was to be quite honest. Cause I don't really watch telly. I don't. I don't watch no. He's blown over a bit now, and I think everyone's forgot about it. But for yeah, like a week or get, two, did mate, he get he fucking big went, fine for that. I don't. I don't know what he got. I know he's. I know he fucked up a lot, and he's probably still regretting it now. Like, but um, imagine that. Fuck oh, hell. There's, there's one. There's one. Way, there's it's weird how viral it went, isn't it? It's yeah. almost like people like, like to wanted. See. They wanted. No, people to see it will always. <clears throat> Want to see people it's a, fail, yeah, yeah, yeah. There was, you know, what I mean, it's like yeah. the usual example of you now. It's like people, even though you're doing all this good stuff and trying to make some of yourself, people. Oh, always... 100% there's a lot of people, and I know 
a lot. I know a lot of them as well, and I've grown up with them. And I can tell that they're proper jealous. Yeah. Um, and to, but to your face, I have to see you on a night out. They're your yes, best mate. They yeah, want you to win by yeah. KO. But if they're that, they, they either one won't pay to fucking watch it, or two, if they if they are watching it secretly, some of them will be like, "Oh fucking hell!" Yeah, it's I've not seen it. Yeah. I've seen it before. Like uh, when I bet um, Toby Binder, mm-hmm. I came up and all the lads are like jumping on me. You could tell people like, "What do you mean people expected Binder going to do a job?" Yeah, like the like the like they wanted me to lose type thing, even though they came to support me. Mm. They've kept the pain to like watch me lose type thing because you could like lads what were excited, they were like loving you and like, oh go on, get on and no, all this carry on. But the then lads in background just not even talking to you. Yeah. And they've come to support you and you think you didn't want me to win you. He was like that though. Mayweather they used to say with him he made that much money because people would tune in to try and see him lose and it just never happened. I think that's what happens at Eric Olsen, you know, I know. Yeah, he's got a bit of a not- notoriety for that. I think people are saying with McGregor now. I think he's a bit of a polarising figure where people are going to tune in, see yeah. if he's going to win or not. Yeah. Like some, most 51% want to see him lose, obviously. Yeah. Has he, is he back yet? I yeah, know he's, he's fighting in Ultimate Fight. He's doing, um, I know he's doing the Ultimate he's Fight. He's fighting Chandler. Is he actually at fighting one, At 170. That's That'll his be next good. fight. That'll be good. When's that? They hadn't announced the date. He looks fucking puffy like he's just been juiced and grown. Well, obviously, mate. Have you pads, not... mate. He looks absolutely... You can he's see by his face, his yeah. features are almost... Listen, age, he's, he's my age, Jim, so like he has aged as well, but... Yeah. But yeah, his bone structure, everything, his jaw and everything just no seems to shape. thicken up. He's probably just been smashing HDH, yeah. yeah. Well, he's, he's got unlimited money. He's going to do it all, isn't he? And you mm. don't get tested outside of competition, so he's, he's in his right to do so if he wants to get healed up. Mm. Do you watch much at UFC or do you I just stick to your I boxing? I don't really watch no. I don't watch, don't watch no boxing. Don't no watch sport? No, no. I, I, if I'm not doing it, I just I can't be asked. I used watching, to be yeah. obsessed, mate. I used to watch I used to watch every UFC. I used to tune into all boxing. I used to watch rugby every Every time they're playing, no, I, don't, I just don't watch any up, sport now. Got ADHD like me. Yeah, I'm just always want to be doing somewhere. Can't sit down and watch a film or not. No, you just feel like you're wasting time, don't you? Yeah. If I'm in hours, I'm. It's fair with sport. Like, I sometimes think that to myself. I am a sport fan as I've got a bit older, but it's like part of me is like you're living almost by curiously through someone else, aren't mm. you? Do you know what I'm saying? It's like. You, you get a, you know when everyone who goes I'm not, I'm not against listen sport can be a good outlet for people who are, who are going through certain things in terms of watching it, but. You're getting that buzz from someone else competing. It's yeah. not mm. you competing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's just, what I feel like. That. So I'm sometimes mm. after like check missing, like don't get too attached to this sport. It's mm. not, I'm not getting anything physically from this. It's yeah. just I feel like I'm attached to sport or yeah, person. Yeah. So you're getting a bit of a buzz from it. Yeah. But you aren't actually going out and getting the the buzz, buzz yourself. yourself. Yeah, yeah. Like, it's I, like, I, I played I played golf at weekend with like Charlie Sharp and all his mates. They're a bit younger, and after they were just for about half an hour so they're like oh did you see Cass play this and, and this guy did this and, and they just sat there and talked about it and they're obviously obsessed with watching Cass and I was thinking I couldn't even have an obsession you know, I, don't, I, I don't even know how people pay for a season ticket to go and watch sports yeah, I live I, I, I just I, think I, do I something better go, with your time I don't know if it's free I don't, I don't even go there and I just think yeah. I can't be asked standing there for an hour cold I don't know any of fucking players I'm not interested in who wins or what if someone's going to have a fight and get knocked out fair enough but there's none of that in sport anymore right, you don't even see it? that no, they've gone too soft rugby league they've pulled off what happened last night game? something happened last night and everyone was fucking tweeting about it saying oh the game's been spoiled they're fucking giving reds out for fun well they're a game last night rugby well, league well now game. even if like basic stuff for me so rugby league's con- it's a collision sport it's not a contact game mm. like, you, meant, you want to see blokes colliding into each other yeah, and now any, right. any sort of contact that's anywhere just like shoulder or head or... Well, you need a bit of aggression, don't you? There's yeah. no aggression they've in pulled, the They've pulled it out. And to Everything's me, gone. Like, well, they took shoulder charge out initially, that what first one that like, everyone wanted to watch rugby for. And then there's just any sort of contact around head. But the problem now is with rugby league is a lot of ex-players are suing RFL for concussion and, and brain damage. You know what it is. There's, there's a big push for a lot of lads who are trying to get serious money out of it. So I was speaking to Watsu, I did a pod with him and... There's a lot of doing that, but ultimately, there I know it sounds harsh. Like you know the risks you're taking. Same with yeah, boxing, course, fucking hell. You, you, yeah. you, you, you go in and fight in bare knuckle. You must understand there's some risk, but there's, there's, yeah. there's, there's a reward for it, and you're getting notoriety for it as well. Mm. So, yeah. but I feel probably these rugby players are probably like, yeah, they understand the risk and that. And then when they get a bit older and they're starting to be a bit slow in head, and they're thinking, and someone goes, oh, you know what, you can you can suit RFL for that, you mm. know, and they'll probably go, oh, fuck it, then let's get some more well, did money. You, did you yeah, not watch yeah, that? Yeah. Like you watched. Um, it was Will Smith who played the doctor about CT NFL. So that, that NFL nearly got like in trouble because they were obviously playing in helmets and just making full on collisions and they started getting CT, like brain damage. Yeah. That like they had to amend their sport there so they couldn't go helmet to helmet. I don't know, it's it's a strange one with that, but So 
obviously fighting brings in a little bit of money you get your sponsorship money Total, sorry about I totally just turned the conversation around here right, it popped up um, sponsors pay you you're obviously getting paid to travel to Dubai and stuff like that what, what other stuff do you do then to earn money sell drugs <laughs> <laughs> no uh, to be fair I just do all really just buy and sell things yeah buy and sell. yeah I'll sell anything and I'll buy anything if, yeah. it's, if I can earn money on it do you ever earn money from uh, the hunting stuff like um yeah, like a little bits, mate, yeah. Um, not much, like, to be quite no. honest. Majority is just with dogs and, like, breeding dogs. And Alice said you've got a little dachshund. Yeah, I've got some Good nightmare, pups as well. Are you getting a pup? I've got some. Got I some. might buy another. Mate, get should, a, should get one. What, what sort of pups you got? Is uh, it the long-haired or short-haired? Short-haired. Um, there's, uh, there's two chocolate dapples and four uh, chocolate and tans. Hey, you should get one. Do you reckon? I, I had two with my ex and then like she she got booted out and she took dogs with her, so I ain't got them now. But I just every time I go to his mate, I just fucking spend yeah, like got, an hour got playing six with it. Minute. Six. Nice little sort of things, yeah. I might look into it. Um didn't you think they're a nightmare though? Just well like needy. Our last yeah. work our last don't work it. Our last don't work a minute, so like literally she, that dog's just with her twenty four seven. Wait until she starts working that mate, dog's so she's be lost. doing occasional she well, she's going away next week on all the oh. crack out. I'm staying at home with dog. I think I might just get it to my mum's life for a bit. You know, It'll be sound. Two or three put it in, <laughs> bring, bring it here. <laughs> <laughs> what, just pop and make him go, like, tame him up? Yeah. Just, just let, him have a week with, let him have a week with Tiffin's um, lurches and that and just yeah, get him fucking sound, toughened then. up. Yeah, yeah. I always wonder that. I, I, will, I will dig as much into this as you want, but in terms of hunting, is that something that you you had a calling to do where it taught to you as a young age? Uh, yeah, I've done that. I've done that, like... Um, as a kid, uh, just fed it in with ferrets, catching rabbits and stuff like that. Um, about six, seven years old, just for my cousin. Um, Are was, you gutting rabbits, eating them, or just killing them for fun? Yeah, well, they used to sell them, to be, to be honest, they used to sell them. Um, and then it went up to be like bigger things, like shooting deer and stuff like that, and all that carrying on till then. I used to be obsessed with fucking ferreting me. me I used to be obsessed no. with trying to kill rabbits. I, I had a big pole cat about this big. And then I bought an albino, a little one from shop. Yeah. And they both lived outside, but the little albino were just like a little um, show ferret, basically. And I had this big one. And I used to go ferret in most weekends. And I used to bring the rabbits back. And I once caught this little rabbit and kept it alive. And I thought, I'm going to give this to a white one and see if this does out. I chucked it in there. And for like a week, mate, we were just best mates with ferret. They were just fucking, <laughs> they were just cuddled up to each other in there. Yeah. I remember this one time I went to Lothat Nall with uh, Mighty Bolton on push bikes. He went, he went back early. And I ended up driving home on my own and I seen this lorry hit a, or, or a car hit a rabbit, but it didn't squash it, it bounced off it and it was there flapping at the side of the road. I just picked it up by its ears, mate, got back on BMX and I was just like pedaling thinking, <laughs> I'm taking this own foot pole cat and it was like twitching in my hand and I was like dropping it and then realising it was it were actually dead and people were beeping at me a lot, mate. But I'm kind of glad I grew out of that phase. I suppose it's, uh, I follow a fair bit of what Rogan does and hunting to a degree to me it's a important skill I wish I knew it to, you can go out in there and sort of hunt your own food if you needed to yeah you could do definitely you could just live off what you killed yeah definitely 100% you could yeah do all that for what you, a pheasant's nice to eat and stuff like that yeah pheasant partage oh deer yeah. what's deer taste like super rich yeah have you not had venison is it venison, venison. I've had venison have you not had it that's, is, that's what it is isn't it yeah mm. yeah I like it all I'll tell you what we'll do boys we can we'll close it off in about 5-10 minutes give us um, we'll close it on this give us a a nice prediction for this fight. Yeah, let's all, let's all let's all get a prediction, right? Let's just so just let me so let, give me some context. So we've got give me this guy's record, MMA record. Do we know what it is? I think he's four and zero. Four and zero. So four and zero. He's going. He's, he's on a good streak. Similar to yours, though. You're four and zero. Yeah. Um. <coughs> BYB rule. So what's that? How many rounds we fight in there? Five threes. Five threes. By the way, what what would you say your street record is? Uh, <laughs> if you had to hazard a guess. <laughs> oh. Record, how many? How many? I don't, like uh, fair straighteners do you think you've had? Just where it's like been a one on one. Oh, like a one on one, like organised. Not organised. So it's just, like just something's happened. It pulled. You both bang. face each other, and then you go, oh. "Let's have it." Then you come in, not just not just knocking people over, out. Over fifty. Yeah, easy. Yeah, yeah. Well, I used to have three or four a night <laughs> on a week. Just racking them up. Yeah, just, we just, I just just love waking up when because when you fight on gravel and that, I used to love waking up with my back stuck to bed sheets, doing because what calls. Ah, and it felt min. I don't even know why. I thought I loved it. It's crazy, that man. Yeah, that's what you used to do. <laughs> have you had many losses in the street? Yeah, losses? I've had loads. You got it. <laughs> I don't care how handy you are. If you're having three or four fights a night, you're going to come a cropper sometime. Oh, man, it's I used to get 11 all the time. Yeah, you can't win them all, can you? Because yeah, I, I used to be very, very, very small. 
and then, then I was going out and all juice heads and all that and he was like getting to me there thinking he fixes it hard him I'll fucking fight him and then he'd see contact and then we'd be at it and then he'd just pick me up put me on my back and break me and I used to get back up and fight him again I, I, I can remember once I got put to sleep five times on bounce that's a very concussion that. yeah that's not good that. five times on bounce um, not being put, being put getting put to sleep what um, just choked yeah but uh, door staff oh fuck um, it they were, they were fighting and wouldn't grab me and put me to sleep Five times I went bouncing. Well, I pissed myself and everything. <laughs> Fucking it was that bad because I was, that must have been that. I hope you didn't have like light chinos on the shit. Oh, no, that's no, like no. my story. I, I just told a story I last week. <laughs> I was choking a bird and while I was shagging her, she shit herself. Shit. I, bet, I bet you shit yourself, <laughs> didn't you? Did you? Fucking proper shit. <laughs> Why is that then when you choked unconscious? Do you just body just relax? Your body just Yeah, you. because you're near enough dead. Are you just. Like, <laughs> <laughs> you, they never killed me then. I'm not kidding. I reckon one more tight squeeze around neck yeah. and that could have been it for five, you. Well, f- five times on bounce and in the end, they quit on me. Yeah, the fight, he's, he's going to Because I kept on quitting back round and I was focusing. I was going, it's like a fairground round this. I'll fight you again. So then I was fighting one of them, but then over in a gummy fucking in sleeper. And I can remember once and all, because they, they, they all wear them black trousers, don't they? They're like cargo dra- trousers type thing. And one of them grabbed me from behind where the fight was. It was in Big Fellas Alleyway with this. And I spun round and picked him straight up, slammed on his back, just about to punch him. It was copper. Oh, oh fucking! Do I went get out of town now? Are you getting locked up? Oh, fuck! A, 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 sim- a similar thing happened to me. This this one arrest got me a fucking criminal record. You know Joe Hall? I don't know if you'll know him. Oh. He, he lives in your state, doesn't he? So someone would come running into Big Fellas and goes, yeah, Joe, Joe's asked me to come and get you. He stood outside front and he's an answer. I'm like, oh, fuck's sake. So I start walking out Ginnell and obviously Ginnell dips a bit, doesn't it? So as I'm walking like that, he can see my legs, can Joe, and he just goes, looks up there, sees it's me, turns back around, just starts belting kids. Like they're like 19 year old kids. Chav's <laughs> just outside Big Fellas. So I come out, start like peeling them off, splitting it up. Joe goes down the street raging with his top off. And you know, as you get round to that square, there's that big glass front just, window. Yeah, What's yeah. Joe shouting when he's got his top off the street? Just going he's in. basically just turns into Conor McGregor, ripped his yeah. top off. He's going, fucking come on, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Bear in right. mind, Joe's tiny, mate, as well. He's just a little hand grenade. <laughs> so, then I, so then he's gone down there with these three guys who are trying to calm him down. And I'm just like, not kicking off with these guys, but sorting stuff out of these. I come down the street and I see these blokes like holding him up against um, a glass window. So I just come in to try and um, like get him off him. And this big guy that stood there, as I walked past him, gets a rear naked on me and starts choking me. And he was way bigger than me. Took it, I took his arm off, like got out of it. I'm like, what the fuck are you doing? Went to walk past him again. And as he stood in front of me again, I whacked him and he fell and snapped his ankle. Yeah. And then I went forward and his mate went, it, one of his mates went to do some. I ate his mate as well. And then the only person that holding Joe, I went to like, I probably wasn't going to hit him. And he turned around and he goes, I'm a, I'm a police officer. And I went, get off him then. And then he goes, all right, Soundy, let's go. Joe, Joe was knackered from wrestling with him for half an hour and I just see blue lights coming down the street. So we sprint oh, no. off, <laughs> like out of Ponte and they were watching us on um, cameras on top of yeah, lamppost. Yeah, yeah. Well, I went to run full pelt through this fucking car park. You know them bollards and they've got like chains with little like <laughs> yeah, spikes, spikes on them, mate. Yeah. I couldn't see them. I ran straight into it. It caught me on my quad there. I've got like a, so I've got a scar somewhere on my leg and it caught me. I did a front flip over it and it ripped me full jeans. It ripped oh, my jeans off God. me. So I got up, we hid in that car park I'm there with no jeans on. Joe's there with his jeans around his legs trying to find stuff. And police come around the corner and they're like, get on the ground now. <laughs> like, like, they're fucking, like they've got guns or something. So I'm just there like, all right, yeah. So Joe gets on the floor, starts putting his hands around his back. I'm like, Joe, fucking get up, mate. And then the, two of them grabbed Joe. One of them grabbed me. This guy was just walking me like nice and nice and calmly. And Joe, because he was kicking off, mate, ragging two of them were just about. ragging him all yeah. over. Once, once you've been detained, there's no need to kick him. No, no. you're not getting anywhere. You're just making it way worse delaying. for yourself. Them yeah, figuring it out for you, innit? They'll twist you up. And they'll just fucking twist you up, beat you up, and you, you don't, yeah, they don't, you don't have a say in it. Cells and all. <laughs> yeah, 100%. And then when we got back to the cells, they put me and Joe in two different waiting rooms. I were in there with like one guy, and Joe were in with like a row of six for like an hour or so. I could just hear him just ripping into everyone sat there, though. One guy kicking off. <laughs> and Joe, Joe, Joe just there going, oh, oh, dummy, shut the fuck up. <laughs> And then, and then police officer say, Where's that come from with him, though? What's he so angry for? Just, just an angry man, mate. He's an angry man. He's an angry man. He's always been, he's always been like, It's in school. And then police officer be like, Hey, calm down, mate. And he'd be like, Do you play Red Dead Redemption? And he goes, I do actually. And he goes, Oh, so and so dies. And like, fucking spoils a game from him. So I was just like laughing in there. Then he heard me laughing. He's like, Is that Ellis? And I'm like, Yeah, he's like, You fucking pussy. I'm like, mate, just get me in a cell and just let me go to sleep, for fuck's sake. So back to predictions, then what we're saying, what's the. Uh, uh, by the way, I, I'm going to get it in there first. I'm going to say, I'm going to say first minute. Tiffin's putting him out. First minute. No, I think if I'm if I'm being real critical, I think there's going to be a little bit of a feeling out process because it ring. 
I don't think there's going to be that feeling that process. No, I think you're going to get yourself acclimatised to sort of have a little look, have a little feel. And I think it's probably done inside to me. You're going to catch him with some wild. Two rounds. You're going to catch him with some wild. We've got to bear in mind, is it five minute rounds? Five freeze. Five freeze. Oh, five three minute. Five three minute rounds? Yeah. In it. You toe the line in this, don't you? So yeah, you yeah. start. Yeah, I don't, I don't think there's going to be much feeling out. What, what do you? No, I don't either. Uh, <laughs> yes. Well, you're just going to stand in pockets after I'm just going to hope, well, I hope to God he just backs what he's saying that he's going to try and knock me out first round because if he's going to do that, then he's got to fight me. Um, yeah. I'm definitely not taking a step back line. I want to, as soon as you meet in there in the middle, as soon as that bell goes on, both is just to meet. Mm. I'm I'm coming forward 100. percent I'd say if he doesn't come forward, he's, he's in that corner. I'm going to break him up. I'd say as soon as they, as soon as the referee's like fighting for a feint, see his reaction. Then I'd just step in and throw. Yeah, throw I'm, I'm definitely then. going to throw a feint straight away. 100. percent Are you we're... working any of the clinch we we weighing is? Yeah, I'm doing bits with him. Yeah, because he's um, MMA, MMA, MMA so mm. he'll be good at that. Do you think you've got five threes in you? Oof, shh, not flat out. <laughs> yeah. If you take it steady, so it's a long fight. That it's a long fight. It is a long fight. Yeah, not flat, flat to boards like I'd like to. Like, I will fight. I wouldn't be able to do that for four or five rounds, no way. No. Um, but I know for a fact, I will fight. If he wants to trade me, he's, get, he's getting knocked out, 100% he is. Yeah, he's love get, that. He's get, he's get, he, there's nowhere to run in there, so he's going to get knocked out. So you said that you get you go into Dubai for a week, yeah. you're fighting on day five. What's, what's day one, two, three, and four going to be? I'd love to re- come and vlog you just in Dubai what you're up to. I think it's fucking mad shit. Yeah. Well, I'd I'm like not- to record them last two days. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'd like to record them last two days. <laughs> it'd, well, probably, it'd be probably a full 48-hour There's, hour there's a chance we never see Tiffin again. I know, probably. 100%. Well, I've just, um, just been looking at hiring a Mustang to get dropped, <laughs> <laughs> to get dropped off at airport for when we get there. That, mate. Yeah, so. Do it right. 280 quid a day. What, to rent to drive? Yeah, you just take it for a full day. So me and lads who was going... To, we can just sightseeing it, must I? And just think we'll ball us for a week and then yeah. come back skin. <laughs> <laughs> Live it all, mate. Yeah, 100%. I bet it's a beautiful part of the world, that. Well, I've looked at a lot of places. It looks really nice. So, we'll see what it is. You have to, there's, they make, there's some good nightlife there as well. I always see people posting some like good stuff nightclub yeah. wise, and it's definitely. I know people say that you get fucked well, I've up. I've only got like one day after, because like, I always like intend to drink after my fight, but because my adrenaline and that zaps me that much. Yeah, you want to sleep. I just get banging headache and I just can't be asked. Have you, have you done any research regarding the plane and the jet lag and the... the no, nah, I don't know that. should probably look at that. Mm. Just as like, I think you can just print off sort of a sleep schedule. Yeah, figure out how so to climatise so best to it. So you get on it. their schedule quick yeah. because a jet lag, it could take you two or three days to get acclimatised to their, their time. Right. So it's important to like... Some take some melatonin supplements and just you can almost have a schedule to tell you when to go to sleep, when to have a coffee, when to when to nap. Right, when to, yeah. So you, those first two days are fairly critical, I think, for just getting acclimatized. Because some people can get caught out with that. Mm. You know, we jet yeah. like I used to travel to <clears throat> Vegas and LA a fair bit with business. What's the difference in hours? I, I think there's five, I think they're five hours behind. Is it? Yeah, but what I'm saying, it, Dubai, it, Dubai's far, isn't it? Yeah, but it's the it's the flight uh, uh, time. It's like you're gonna get you're gonna get jet lagged maybe a little bit with the flight. Yeah, so let's just. Well, just... what happens with flight? I land there. Uh, well, I get in the hotel. It just past midnight there. So, so what, what, what you've got to figure sure. out is what time would it be here when you land? Figure out if you should sleep on plane and like should you have a nap so that you can have a yeah. full night's sleep. If there you're because... getting there at midnight, you could probably fight the, the urge to sleep if you could. Yeah, well, and I can st- over there. here. Uh, I've got to be there at nine o'clock in the morning. So I'll be like, that's not too bad then, really, is it? Because you've got a full day of traveling, arrive at midnight, probably just sleep on their time. Yeah, that's what I mean. Wake yeah. up and you're on yeah. their time. Uh, yeah, definitely. Yeah, I think, I think it's a good like flight mm-hmm. because I'd be tired. We fuck, we aren't flying and traveling for a day, so as soon as I get there, it, like just past midnight, we get into hotel. So time to go to bed, isn't it? That'll be good. So just to close the podcast, then I've said within a minute, you're saying within two rounds. What are you I think, saying? I think Tiff? inside two rounds it gets caught with someone, yeah. Yeah, I think um it'll be definitely finishing within two rounds. Yeah. Hundred percent. Good lad. Hopefully the first, mate. Yeah. Thank you very Hopefully. much for coming on. All the best. Best of luck with it all, mate. Bye yo. Bye yo.